Shalom. Call her Lord, Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, Bahashem Rakar Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the aquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth. And this will be uh, part two of uh, the Maccabees in secular and biblical histories, uh, history. And um, I'm just going to jump right back into this thing with working with the book that you see on screen, except my, mine is the third edition. All right. Um, 1934 and the one on the screen is 1927. Um uh, what I would do to have the, the first edition, but because uh, this this video, I mean this 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 Bible this Bible dictionary is banging, and yet again exposing the lies which is Christianity and which is Judaism, on a on a very high level. You know when you know what you're reading and what you you know, but I'm gonna start on page 465, and I was uh I'm gonna pick up where I left off, and it says the first mention of. The first, yeah, I did read that. I'll read it again. The first of the family mentioned is Matthias as an aged priest who, who driven to desperation by the outrages of Antiochus' epiphanies, raised a revolt against him and fled to the mountains, followed by those who were zealous for the faith of Israel. All right. And the faith of Israel is the belief in the law, statutes and commandments, not Judaism. Judaism is of the Talmud. It has nothing to do with the Bible. All right. Absolutely nothing. Um, Isaiah 34 and 16 clearly tells you that there is no book to mate with the Bible. Isaiah 36 and 14. Uh, and 36, and hold on. I don't want to tell you wrong. I say it that with conviction. Let me make sure I'm right. I think it's 36 and 16. 34 and 16. Matter of fact, now I'll just read it. Let's go to it. Got to cross our T's and dot our eyes. This is Isaiah 36 or 34. See, I was off. I was saying 36. It's 34 and 16. I knew it was a 6 in there. Right. So it's Isaiah 34 and 16, and it reads Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read, No one of these shall fail, men in the prophecies. None shall want her mate, for my mouth it have commanded, and his spirit it have gathered them. So these other books that you'll find, the you know, uh, the book of Enoch, the book of Yasher, the you know, um, the town, the Talmud, you know, and all these other the Kabbalah, the Quran, um, the Bible speaks against them, and they don't match up with the prophecies in the Bible. Right? Hence the reason why you will see these uh, you know, these rabbis that's come out of the woodwork trying to defend the lies trying to defend um, their false claim to being the people of the Lord and say that we're the false ones <laughs> saying even going as far as saying that we're the Edomites <laughs> boy how pathetic are they the Edomites are uh, uh, ruling the world all right remember the Lord returns to a world ruled by Edom and uh, and a video that I have on the critical historical race channel uh, the, the critical what is it called uh Critical Race Historical Facts Channel. Uh, I went into the uh, the Jewish Encyclopedia, which had four hundred scholars. All right, I believe it's in nineteen twenty five. Four hundred scholars, all Jewish rabbis and scholars, that put that book together. And in that book, it tells you that modern day Jewry is is Esau Edom. All right, it even tells you when the Khazars converted, embraced. Judaism and a Jewish encyclopedia for coming from their own references. So I guess those 400 uh, Jewish scholars were all wrong, huh? And that's just one of many. It also says it in the 1971 and also in the 1905, pretty much the same information. But let us continue. Um, and it says, Matthias died about two years afterward, but the revolt was carried on by his five sons, Judas, the third son, was the first military leader in 166 BC by avoiding pitched battles and harassing Syrians by the vigorous and persistent guerrilla warfare. 
He and his devoted band defeated the and, and routed every detachment of the Syrian army sent against them. He retook Jerusalem, purified the temple, and restored the daily sacrifice. A feast to celebrate the rest, the rest uh, restoration uh, was kept annually thereafter in the winter in the Feast of Dedication. Yeah, I read all this. Okay, because um, that's all in the first video. All right, the history of Hanukkah, of the Feast of Dedication, is, is in the Apocrypha. All right, and it's mentioned in John, the 10th chapter, the 22nd verse. The Lord was keeping this feast which is found in the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha has always been a part of the gospel, but they needed the Apocrypha to be removed in order to teach that universal love and universal salvation because the Apocrypha makes it beyond clear what people may get it twisted in the, in the Old and New Testament, but in the Apocrypha, it makes it beyond clear that salvation is only for Israel. Well, it does in the New Testament as well and in the Old, but you know, people get stupid and play semantics, all right? But it says, uh, Judas fell in battle in 160 BC, whereupon his younger brother, Jonathan, who was already high priest, assumed command of the army about the time John and the eldest brother was captured and killed by the children of, uh, about this time, John and the eldest, and, and the eldest brother was captured and killed by the children of, Jabir, of, of Jambri. 1 Maccabees 11, 36, shortly uh, before another brother, Eleazar, had been crushed to death under an elephant, which had wound, which he had wounded in battle. During the leadership of Jonathan, the Syrians were occupied with civil war. This would be the rawest movie ever made. My, fa my, my favorite uh, series ever was The Last Kingdom, especially knowing that none of those people were white like they were portrayed in, in the actual show. And, and that history is actually connected to biblical history because these are the descendants of King James. And we know that King James, the Scots and the Irish were indeed Israelites and they were not white people, you know. Um, and it's an easy thing to prove. All right. And so neither were the, uh, uh, were the, were the Danes, the Vikings, you know, all, all those were so-called Negroes, all Israelites. That's what makes the story so fascinating, knowing that truth. Right. And how Esau just, you know, intends on, on pushing, pushing his lie of white superiority. All right. Because even going back to uh, uh, the, the mythology that the uh, Vikings believed in always all goes back to Greek mythology and the number one Greek god, which is was Zeus, father of Hercules, which actually happens to be my birth name. All right. The uh, the 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 father of uh, 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 of Hercules was Zeus. And Zeus was described um, in the ancient times in text by by uh, scholars as being Athops or Athiops, which was just a, a Greek word or Latin way of saying uh, black. All right, it was just a description. It didn't necessarily mean someone from from the uh, from Cush. That's an actual Ethiopian. It just was a, a term used to describe someone who was dark, who was brown flesh. All right. Simple as that. All right, so let's go to the scriptures and get some of this history that we just read about, um, you know, concerning the fall of Jonathan, of Judas, Jonathan, and, uh, and Eleazar. All right, so let's go to the scriptures. Okay. And, um... So let's go to 1 Maccabees um, 9. All right, because Judas fought many. Matter of fact, I just opened it up to five. I'll read right here. This is 1 Maccabees uh, 5 and, and, uh, and 1 through 3. And it says, Now when the nations round about heard that the altar was built and the sanctuary renewed as before, it displeased them very much because all the nations were under subjection when we were in power. And they will be again upon the return of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, upon the return of the Lord. The Lord is coming back to restore Israel. All right. And he will be the king over Israel. All right. The ultimate king over Israel. And he also going to put David back on the throne. So David was promised, uh, you know, kingship forever. And, and for those of you who, who are spiritually undiscerned, David is Peter. That's why Peter was handed the keys. 
All right. So, you know, and that's why it says that, you know, that David would be with, with uh, uh, well, that's why I told Peter he would sit, they would sit on thrones. He would be the head of that. All right. They will sit on thrones judging, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. So the Lord is going to set up a new government, which can be found in Revelation, the second chapter. 12,000 men from each of the 12 tribes headed up by King David. All right. King David will be the third in command in all of heaven and earth. All right. That will be the order. The Most High Father, Yahweh, the Great and Terrible, Yahweh Shai, our, our Mighty Savior and King, and then our, and then our Under King, if you will, like an underboss, all right, would be a, a you know, a, a King David in this in this thing of ours, you know, because the majority of the Assyrians, it's a, uh, uh, it's not Assyrians, Sicilians, you know. Actual bloodline to say Sicilians, they're, they're Israelites. They go back to the Moors, and the Moors were Israelites. All right, so that this thing of ours, all right, it, it has its own governing body, which is going to govern over all the world. All right, uh, first Maccabees 5 and 3. Then Judas fought against the children of Esau in Idumia. This is how you know that the Idumia is talking about the Edomites. Okay, at Arabatine, because they besieged Israel. And he gave them a great overthrow and abated their courage and took their spoils. And we're going to take their spoils again. Their food, their resources, their women. We're going to sell them and their children into uh, into slavery. All right. That's what it's going to be. Galatians 6 and 7 pretty much tells you so. Colossians 3 and 25. Revelation 18, 6. It says it's a righteous thing to recompense those who cause you tribulation. All right. So we got to pay them back. Okay, but let's go to first back of beast nine and I'm going to read verses 11 through 22. And this is about the fall of uh, the fall of uh, the mighty Judas Maccabees. All right. Um, which is my channel was uh, uh, named after. Okay, this channel, the, uh, the Maccabean spirit is my first channel. Actually, it's really my second, but it was the first one I started putting videos up on. Uh, I have a channel called The Rubenite, which is actually my first channel, but that was just me watching videos and stuff like that. Um, I didn't actually, when I actually started putting up lessons going back uh, to what, 2009, uh, somewhere around there, the Maccabean channel, that channel is still up, amazingly, but you know, that's all through the power of Yahweh Bashim that was shy, but uh this is 1st Maccabees 9 and 11. I'm going to read to 22, and it reads, And with that, the host Bacchides removed out of their tents, and then Bacchides, a two-thirds sellout nigga, all right, that stood over against them, their horsemen, being divided into two troops, and their singers and their archers uh, marched uh, forward, were all mighty men. And as for Cadiz, Bacadis, he was in the in the right wing. So the hosts drew near unto the two parts and sounded their trumpets. They also of Judas' side, even they sounded their trumpets also, so that the earth shook at the noise of the armies, and the battle continued from morning till night. So the swords clinging and clashing, you know, the, the men screaming, people dying. You know, battle cries and cries of pain. It says, now when Judas perceived that Bacchides and the strength of his army were on the right side, he took with him all the hardy men who discomforted the white, the right ring. So they, they tried to flank them and they went to that flank and they, and they discomforted them. They, they beat that ass in layman terms. All right. Um, and pursued them unto the Mount of Azotus. So that when they was getting that ass beat, they start, they took to flight to run and they pursued them. All right. Uh, um, Judas and his men pursued them. Whereupon there was a sore battle in so much as many men were slain on both parts. Judas also was killed and the remnant fled. All right. So unfortunately, that's when we lost. Um, uh, one of our mighty judges, one of the mightiest judges of Israel was uh, was Judas. And it says, And Jonathan and Simon took Judas, their brother, and buried him in the sepulcher, uh, sepulcher of his fathers in Modin. All right. Moreover, they bewailed him in all Israel 
made great lamentation for him and mourned him many, many days, saying, How is this, how is the valiant man fallen that delivered Israel? All right. And he definitely was a, a, a mighty man of the Lord, man. Judas Maccabees was. All right. As for the other things concerning Judas and his wars and the noble acts which he did in his greatness, they are not written, for they are very, they were very many. So Judas did many other great feats and battles. It's not even written, man. All right. How much more so Yahawashai? All right. So now let's go to, uh, to Jonathan. We jump up to verse uh, 31. And it says, upon this, Jonathan took the governance upon him at that time and rose up in the stead of his brother Judas. All right. But when Bacchides and his bass are still alive and when Bacchides got knowledge thereof, he thought for to slay him and and and. Uh, matter of fact, let me jump down to. So I don't want to read the whole thing. I just want to go to when he when he fell, because it's gonna go into the everything that was going on with uh Jonathan. Yeah, the betrayal of Jonathan. Um and there and it was some old uh man, it was so gay. Um but this is uh another wicked Israelite trifling, all right. It's Trifon and Bacchides. Um, no, Trifon wasn't an Israelite. All right. But they were fighting the uh, Edomites in Syria. It was fighting the Civil War. All right. Um, but uh, it says, and I'm in I'm in uh, 1 Maccabees 12. And I'll start at 39. It says, now Trifon went about to get the kingdom of Asia and kill Antiochus, the king that he might set a crown upon his own head. Howbeit he was afraid that Jonathan would not suffer him and that he would fight against him. Wherefore he sought the way of how to take Jonathan that he might fight, might kill him. So he removed and came to Besham. Then Jonathan went out to meet him with 40,000 men chosen for the battle and came to Beth, Beth, Beth Stan. And man, I tell you, yeah, oh man, this is the time that I I, I should have been alive in because this generation here is, is is too soft for me. But it says now when Trifon saw Jonathan came with so great a force, he durst not stretch out his hand against him because he he thought he was going to come weak. All right, and when he saw when he saw all those Israelites, man, he was like, oh, okay, maybe I shouldn't do this, but received them honorably. And commended him unto all his friends, and gave him gifts, and commanded his and, and commended his men of war to be obedient unto to him as unto himself. Unto, um, I'm gonna jump down to 46. So Jonathan believed it. No, I gotta read. It says, Until him also he said, Why hast thou pulled put all this people to so great trouble? Seeing there is no war betwixt us, therefore send them. Now home again and choose a few men to wait on thee and come thou with me to Ptolemus, for I will give it to thee and the rest of the strongholds of the forces and all that have charge, have any charge as for me, I'll, I will return and depart for this cause of my coming. So Jonathan believeth him. So basically he was like, come with me, brother. Send, you don't need all, you don't need 40,000. You don't need all these soldiers, man. Just bring you know, a few with you and then come with me and I'm going to deliver unto you, uh, uh, you know, Ptolemus. All right. But remember, Trifon wanted to be king himself. He wanted to rule in, in, in Ptolemy's stead. All right. But it says. Um, so Jonathan believeth him, believing him, did as he bade and sent away his host and went into and who went into the land of Judea. And the scriptures, and you know, it tell us to never trust thy enemy. All right. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find that. I think that's in uh, 
Second Ezra 9 and 10 or 12. Let me find that real quick. Let me hold my place here. Slovakia. He has Ecclesiastes. So Sirach 12 and 10, right? Never trust thy enemy for his, for like his iron rusteth, so does his wickedness. So no matter how clean he looks, that rust always returns. All right. And and Jonathan, you know, didn't didn't follow this commandment. He trusted his enemy. All right. He trusted an Edomite. And it says. So Jonathan believed in him, did as he bade him, did, did as he bade him and sent away his host who went into the land of Judea and with himself he retained but three thousand men of whom he sent a thousand into Galilee and one thousand with him. So I have a feeling if he'd even kept that, that three thousand with him, this probably wouldn't have happened, but everything happens through the spirit. I should say, all right. So it says, now as soon as Jonathan entered into entered into Ptolemy's, they of Ptolemy shut the gates and took him, and all them that came with him, they slew with the sword. So basically they came inside and they closed the gates behind them and they had them surrounded and, and, and superiorly outnumbered. I'm sure they had the advantage. And they and they sent Trifon and host of footmen and horsemen into Galilee and into the great plains to destroy all Jonathan's company. But when but when they knew that Jonathan and they that were with him were taken and slain, they encouraged one another and went out close together, prepared to fight and therefore and they therefore that followed upon them, perceiving that they were ready to fight for their lives, turned back again. All right. So, you know, when he, that's Esau, when Esau could sneak attack you, or, you know, attacking from the rear, attacking women, they have a history of that. Look what they did to Gad. They would wait for the men to go out and then they would come in and attack villages. They would, they would attack, attack our strongholds when the, when the men were out hunting. All right, and it says, whereupon they all came into the land of Judea peaceably, and they were, and, and, and there they bewailed Jonathan, and them that were with him were, were sore afraid, wherefore all Israel made a great lamentation. So once again, we were lamenting, you know, um, we were lamenting the death of, of a, of a great, you know, Israelite. We were lamenting the death of, uh, the, you know, the death of Jonathan. So now we see, we read about Eleazar. Let's get that real quick. And we'll, uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to talk about, we're going to go continue with the death of Eleazar, um, in part three. All right. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekha Kwadash, Wa'ababa, Ba'al, Kwam, Yasharala, Shalom.